Welcome back. NHS England has unveiled new guidance for youngsters distressed about their gender. Doctors should now carefully explore all underlying health problems, being mindful that this may be a transient phase. But extremists continue to intimidate anyone who disagrees with them. Just this week, Cambridge University had to apologise to students for inviting Helen Joyce, who believes that one's sex cannot be changed. Luckily, Helen Joyce won't be silenced, and she's with us now, alongside Ollie London, who detransitioned and now lives as a man again. Good evening, both of you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Now, Ollie, I wanted to talk to you first. Mm -hmm. You were very keen to come on tonight and tell us a bit about your story. You transitioned to a woman, and now you're back as a man. Mm -hmm. what, what led to that decision? Did you feel forced into it? Just, just give us a little bit of detail. Um, so my whole life I was actually very um, unhappy with the way I looked, so it actually started out as me wanting to change wanting to look more perfect, more beautiful. So I kind of went on this quest since 2013 to undergo surgery to try and achieve perfection. And I've kind of realized that perfection is not attainable. So do you think that was more sort of body dysmorphia? I think so. I've come to realize now I've had so many surgeries, about 32 actual plastic surgeries in total. Um, as you can see, I've got so many scars kind of all over my face. So I feel like that's how it started off. And then I got to a point earlier this year where I still hadn't achieved happiness. So I thought maybe I should be a trans woman. Maybe that's why I'm unhappy. So, you know, I was trans for six months. You know, I had the facial feminization surgery, I had 11 procedures. I had the hair extensions and I just realized, you know, it, it just wasn't, wasn't me, it wasn't who I was inside. Were you taking any advice from anyone? Were you, were you seeking medical help, um, psychiatric help? What kind of advice were, were you being offered at the time? It was more seeing things online. You know, I'm a social media person, so I'm always using TikTok oh, and Twitter. And we've got some pictures here of, of, of you as a, as a yes, woman. So how, how long ago was that? Was that quite recently? That was actually at London Fashion Week, so that was literally a month ago, so kind of a drastic change. Um, but I'm always kind of changing my looks. I'm always kind of changing up. But yeah, I kind of saw on social media, you know, people constantly changing their identities. And I thought, you know, why not? Let me try it. Let me see if it's yeah. for me. But even as a trans woman, I was very respectful for women. I would never use women's restrooms or changing rooms. I never wanted women to feel threatened by me. I was just kind of, I guess I was having an identity crisis or gender dysphoria, mm. which a lot of kids have these days. So I just want to speak up to try and raise awareness that, you know, kids should not be transitioning. Well, Helen, this comes into something that you wrote about in your book. Um, I mean, there's been this whole question in recent years about suggestibility, mm. which you address and have a lot of thoughts on, but also this question of uh, whether people who feel in some way uncomfortable in their bodies or not perfect, as Ollie said, are being sort of pushed down this road of saying, well, if you're a teenager and you're uncomfortable in your body, instead of being just a teenager, uh, maybe you're actually in the wrong sex. I mean, we know all people are quite uh, easy to influence in this sort of way. Like, diseases get shaped in doctors' waiting rooms between the doctor and the patient. And then the media play a part in that. And in the last 10 years or so, I would say social media has come in to make a big, big difference there. So, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I think it's inarguable that things like anorexia are social contagions. And I think we're seeing a social contagion now with gender dysphoria that kids who would never have thought to themselves that there was any question that they could change sex, I mean, that's not actually possible, but, you know, get that idea into their heads, they pick that idea up online, then they present it to doctors who are thinking about an old-fashioned way to look at this, that there are a tiny number of people who have this thing called gender dysphoria. They haven't updated their thinking for modern times and social mm. media. They're diagnosing those kids and they're putting them down a pathway that it's hard to get off. Now, we mentioned uh, earlier uh, what happened with you at Cambridge University this week. It, it, maybe tell us a little bit about this, because it sort of seems surprising to me, of all the people to sort of try to depict as some mad right-wing maniac nutter, I don't think of you as being number one on the list. Almost everybody I know I'd put on the list ahead of you. So, so how, come, how come you've become uh, uninvitable at uh, Cambridge University? I, I mean, all I can say is I think the world has gone mad. I mean, it, all, I, all I do is say there are two sexes and you can't change sex. In some situations, that matters, especially for women. That's it. That's my three beliefs. They're not even beliefs, they're just facts. 
But it turns out they're inconvenient facts for people who think about the world through identities and who like to think about everything as changeable, everything as mutable. You know, it's this modern sort of queer theory influenced way of thinking about identity, that all boundaries are fluid and that everything that is fixed is bad and constraining and that we have to try and overturn everything. So I guess that, you know, somebody who just says very boringly, like mums are very boring people who say to you, you know, pack an umbrella, do you know where you're going? And by the way, sorry, you can't have everything you want in life. Uh, you know, that didn't go down very I, well. I just wanted, because I wanted the pair of you to, to talk about this in a way, you talk about the reasons why people are confusing sex with gender identity. And one of them I thought was very interesting was socialisation. And because of you having lots of mm. wanting to be more beautiful, you say that being... Being a woman has now been cons is considered by, say, the trans community, some members of the trans community, that that's about how we behave. But that's not true. We're talking about a biological, a biological difference between us. I mean, we're mammals. Um, so, but I think it's mm. interesting that you pick up on the beaut beaut sort of beautifying mm. of us, and that's exactly what you were trying to do, and confusing that mm. maybe with wanting to change sex. Is, is, is that something...? You know, I definitely feel I had gender dysphoria, and I definitely think, you know, when we look at television shows, I mean, you have some really shocking things, like on Channel 4, when they had the other day the trans person ripping all their clothes off, playing a piano with their penis. I mean, that is just beyond shocking. And, you know, unfortunately, when women try to speak out and say, you know, this is not good for our kids, they get cancelled, they get silenced, just like J.K. Rowling. And, you know, I think it, it's wrong. And I think there are so many people out there trying to push these ideas on young people. And I think I was one of those people influenced by that. You know, I was just chasing perfection. Mm. But I thought, you know, maybe I'm trapped because everybody else is saying, oh, you can change this, you can change that. I understand biology. And I also agree with Helen, you know, you can't change biology. But I think with me, it's more trying to change my looks. Let me make an observation, by the way, Helen, as we start to wrap up. Um, in the States, the trans debate is nowhere near as advanced as it is here in the UK. And the thing that is missing there, and what we seem to have here, is left-wing women, yep. among others, speaking up. Uh, gay women, straight women. Uh, and that seems to be changing the debate. Uh, you're obviously part of this, but do you agree? I mean, there's a, there's a shift going on. Yes, I think that in America it's sadly become a totally polarised issue. Yeah. That if you're a Democrat, you have to believe that people can change sex and that gender identity overwrites sex. And if you're a Republican, you can be against it, but then there's a bunch of other things that you believe that a lot of women would find quite uncongenial. And so each side sort of looks at the other side and says, you know, look at the mad things they believe, look what they'll do to us. Whereas here, I think there are much more cross-party allegiances, uh, much more cross-cutting sort of approaches to it, and much more rationalist and focused on children as well. That's the important thing. We're misleading children. I mean, Ollie's a grown-up. If he wants to do these things to himself, that's one thing. But leading a child down that path, children believe what adults tell them. But also, I think the big thing that we're discussing is that this... this it needs to be discussed, it needs to be debated yeah. without being shouted down. Exactly. Of course there are differences of opinions. There are members of the trans community who want to bring their issues to the light, but we should be able to discuss it as adults yeah. and, yeah. Not, and not be silenced on either In side. Including actually. at universities. And if you can't talk about this at universities, where well, could you? Nowhere, apparently. Thank you so much <laughs> for both coming on the show Thank tonight. You. We really Thank appreciate you. it. Still to come...